Robin. Uh, hello. How are, How are you? you? Just making sure we're recording and that I have the chat up and all the things, right? Uh, well, I, I just always do the login early because I get doing other things and then all of a sudden I look at my watch and I'm like, oh, it's 10 after three or something. So that way when you, you log in, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Yeah. So, well, I'm so glad that you joined yesterday and that you dropped your takeaways into <laughs> the thread. That was amazing. Um, tell me just a little bit more about your business. Yeah. Um, so I'm a travel consultant. So I'm yeah. a, an IC under a big host agency. So I have my own business, but I have a host agency and I do, I try to do, or was doing a lot of luxury um, type uh, vacation planning, trip planning, things like that. But things have been a little slow lately. Things are a little different in the travel world, I am sure. Yeah. One of the, the many industries, uh, but yeah. Oh gosh, no fun. Um, yeah. I'm in a, in a group program with a gal that um, does like luxury Italian tours. Oh, okay. So when Italy was literally shut down for like, oh. <laughs> she was a little, it wasn't so great, but um, she's had a lot of creative juices going with how to yeah. not, but pivot is a good word, not yeah. move things around, but just pivot slightly. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I can't even imagine how difficult that would be yeah. right yeah. about now. So well, thank you everybody just... for joining us. Yay, yay, yay. Hello, hello. Um, we have Ish, we have Christine, wonderful. Amy, hi, Valerie, hi. Julie, Connie, yes, Al Al Alicia. I hope I'm saying your name right, because I also work with someone that is spelled the same, but it's pronounced Alicia instead of Alicia. And so I always, I know it's tough to get everybody's names exactly right. So I'm sorry if I butcher anybody's name. I do not mean to. Uh, I got it right. Yay. Wonderful. You're rocking your COVID collar ish. Yes, absolutely. It's lovely. We like it. All right. Well, we're going to just give everybody just a second to, um, to log on. Um, but um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that joined yesterday and then that you're taking the time out to join today. I'm super excited to talk about ad copy with you guys. <laughs> um, I think it's um, one of the more fun parts of creating your ad, um, but I think it's also the thing that kind of stresses people out sometimes, um, which is why I'm handing over to you guys some templates today to make that super easy um, because uh, that is just something you don't need to like fully stress over when you're getting started. Um, sometimes having those templates to be a springboard can be really, really helpful. So that way you don't get yourself stuck and um, get in that rut and not be able to move forward. So I'm all about moving forward. And if templates help people do that, more power to you. Suzanne, Kristen, thank you for joining. And yes, hey, great question, Christine, on the convert kit yesterday. Um, let me fix my camera real quick, you guys. Um, yeah, so if anybody didn't catch that in the Facebook group, the overall <laughs> consensus is that you might be able to run <laughs> Facebook ads um, directly to a ConvertKit landing page. It does have the capability to have a separate thank you page, which is amazing. I'm glad Christine brought that to my attention because I hadn't seen that rolled out within ConvertKit. Um, but it's a little tricky. And so I explained it all in the Facebook video, so um, or in the video on our Facebook group. So definitely go check that out. If you have questions around it, let me know. Um, but what it really comes down to is how well it's going to be able to track that pixel to the thank you page. And honestly, without um, having tested it myself, I don't want to tell you definitively that you can do it. Um, but from my research, it looks like you should be able to. So um, I would still prefer if you made a separate thank you page on your website or something like that, just so you um, have it super static and, and secure and you know that that's where people are going because you can direct to a thank you page of your choosing from your convert kit landing page so um that is definitely something you do i explain it all in the video and i show pictures and i have a loom and it's a thing so just go check out the facebook group um but we're gonna dive in today but before we do that we get to like do our little like drum roll you guys can all join me with that um to see who is winning the um like i said you guys it's the it's the worst title overcoming under earning i promise you it is an amazing book i i seriously read it twice last year my business coach recommended it to me and i was like this 
doesn't sound like a book I need, but I, I love it. And every time I pick it up and thumb through it, um, I always find little nuggets that are just great reminders or something that changes the way I think about it. So super excited for Kristen to be getting this. Kristen, La I'm going to say your name wrong. Lawton? Lawton? I don't know. I'm so sorry if I said it wrong. Kristen, I think you're here on the, on the call today. Yay! Yay! So Kristen, I'm going to message you after this and get your address and it is going in this lovely envelope and going right to you at the, um, our mail gets picked up in the morning. So it will go out in the mail tomorrow morning. Okay. So look for me to message you that tomorrow or, um, after class today and we will get your address. All right. So yesterday guys, we covered lots of stuff. I know in terms of strategy, in terms of why we would build our email list or why we would put budget where budget belongs. A lot of you commented on the, on the thread that the budgeting piece was like very eye opening for you. So I'm really happy that I was able to have that conversation with you. Um, and if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the Facebook group. Not that you can't ask them in here today. You absolutely can. Um, but in case there are people catching the replays and things like that, um, dropping them into the group sometimes allows more people to see it and get the answers too. So feel free to do that if you are thinking over anything and you're kind of like, oh, you know, what about this or what about this? Um, so we covered all that yesterday. Uh, which means today is all about ad copy. So we're going to be like, yay, ad copy. Um, and really, before we dive in, and I'm going to share my screen. Today, I'm going to share my screen. It's still not slides. I promise you. It's still not slides. I am going to share my screen much more today because I'm going to also give you a workbook that you are going to able to download on your own and work through at the same time. Um, but before I do that, I just want you to be thinking about what do you think makes for really good ad copy? I just want you to mull it over for just a second and then type it into the comments for me. What do you think like the secret to writing really good ad copy would be? Because lots of people are like, what's the secret? How do you get a high converting ad? Um, emotions, connection. Good, good answer, Christine. Awesome. Let's see what other people come up. Get their attention right away. Pain points, feelings, pain points, speaking to the people you want. You guys, you're all 100% right. Um, and we are going to hit on every single one of those things inside the workbook. But I also just really, really want you, and this is the hardest part. And like, I have to stop myself on this all the time. And this is the hardest part when we are our own business, create an ad and write things. And that is to use the words your audience uses. Okay. So we're definitely going to hit on pain points and we're definitely going to hit on emotions and connection and speaking and making sure that it's the right people and everything like that. But if you're not using the language that they use to describe their problem or what they need solved or how they would say something, it, it's really hard to get their attention then. And it's really hard to make that emotional connection. So for example, if I had advertised this class as um, like uh, 3X your CTR and cut your CPC by 50%, who the heck here knows what those acronyms even mean? Amy does, <laughs> she knows. But that's really what advertisers say. And so if I were advertising to other advertisers, that would be great because it would totally get their attention. They'd be like, yeah, I want my cost per click down. Yeah, I want my click through rate up. Go for it. But it would mean nothing to you. You'd probably just scroll right by it. So what I really did was take the same idea in my ad, but I said, grow your email list, right? Because you guys all, that all resonated with everyone that's here. Grow your email list, all right? Um, and you can add a lot of things around it. So I can say effortlessly grow your email list, right? Get those little things or grow your email list in under 20 minutes a week, you know, and you get like pain points and, and all these fun things in there. But if I didn't have the, the core of what I'm helping people with really in your own words, it would fall very, very flat. Okay. So just in, and here's the thing you might write ad copy the way you say things first, but then I want you to put on those lenses and go through it again. And, and if you haven't already been 
really connecting with your audience organically, this is, this is why it's important to have a two way street of communication with your, with your audience. So if they're not, you know, responding to your emails or responding to your Instagram stories or things like that, and you not, you're not sure how they say something, if you're not sure that you're using the right words, you might need to go do a little digging. Okay. Um, because sometimes we run, we're running ads before we, as we're building up an audience. So like that two way street of communication just might not be there fully yet. And so if you feel like, okay, well, I don't have those words. I want you to go where those people are hanging out and just, just spy, just do a little Intel, you know, um, and just make sure that you're actually saying things the way they would say it. Okay. So that's the lens that we're going to put this workbook through is using the words that our client uses. And you can definitely interject your own personality into it. And I, I'm going to encourage you to do that. I'm even going to show you some examples of where I've done that in my own copy, but, um, but you still can't miss that core messaging of saying things the way people want to hear them. Right. Otherwise psh, blinders go up, eyeballs glaze over and there we go. So, um, be okay. So let me No, oh, Amy, you said I'm taking a Facebook ads course. That's why you know, those, those, those terminologies there. Um, awesome. So I'm going to share this Google doc with you guys. Give me one second as I grab the link. Um, this is going to, we're going to do something very different here real quick. You know how in every like webinar masterclass, guest masterclass you've ever been on, they're all like, put your cell phones away very important that you close all your windows, turn off your email, put your cell phone away. Okay. I'm giving you full permission. Would love for you to get your cell phone out right now. As I, oh, see, look, it's my little baby boy. That was when he was just a little baby. He's big now. Um, get your cell phone out. I would love for you to take a selfie or take like a group selfie here and post it to your Instagram stories. Let me know that you're joining me as I go grab this link. Cause it's going to give me a second to go grab the link. Cause I, I just want to double check that you guys all have the access to it. So one second here. Do, do, do. I also ask a question, Katie, while you're yes. doing that. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Um, it's about copy because I tend to over complicate and overthink things. Um, my my avatar for all intents and purposes is kind of me like a year and a half ago. <laughs> um, and so I, I feel like, and I think, although I'm sure that I can still do a little work around this, that I am writing to them. Is it possible that I am? You know, I know like there's a woman that I know that does um, training for like step parents, right? But she's not a step parent herself. So I feel like in that situation, there might need to be a little bit more research done in terms of, you know, the things that that avatar would be saying. But is it okay right now that it does feel pretty natural for me to be writing that copy or is it something that, you know, there should be a little bit more work, but it, it, does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Um, and I'll answer that into that. Okay. Everybody just dropped the Google doc into the chat. So just make sure you should be able to open it up and make a copy. Please let me know if you can't because Google docs have been giving me all sorts of grief lately. So, um, so make sure you guys can access that. Give me a little thumbs up or say, yep, got it in the chat. So Caitlin, yes. You, a lot of times our ideal clients, we are them, but we're just further along in the journey. So you probably find it very natural because you remember that very vividly. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're opening up like a coaching program here soon, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So in terms of looking through their lens, I just want you to remember most of this will probably, most of the writing might come very natural to you. Awesome. But remember where they are in that stuck feeling and the transformation they're looking for. And just make sure you're not putting your coach terms there in the ad copy or the landing page or things like that. And that you're really speaking to the transformation that they're looking for in very plain terms, rather than edging a little technical or edging a little to the, to the term of like, Oh, um, it's something I assume everybody knows, but, maybe I need to make sure that I'm not making that assumption. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, like for, for Jen with like gut health, for example, like if she starts talking about microbiome and her people have no idea that a microbiome exists in your gut, that word might be just like not right. So just make sure you're not putting too much of your expertise into the copy and you're probably going to be just fine. Great. That's super helpful. Thank you. 
Awesome. Okay, wonderful. All right, guys, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to work through this workbook together. Yay. Um, okay, let me just make it just a little bit bigger for you. Um, you guys can all follow along as well. Um, oops, there we go. Um, so this is talking about cracking the ad copy code and we're diving right in and you guys you get access to this this workbook so you've made a copy it's yours to keep feel free to make any comments to yourself on that copy of that workbook that you need to as we talk through anything okay so um, we're we're big, we're kind of we're already got most of this first page done um, but one thing I want you to remember here is that when you're writing your ad copy very often we feel like we should convince someone that they should do xyz so um i'm not i don't want to try to convince you that you should grow your email list too much i want to show you that i'm the person to help you grow your email list do you see that switch so like most people know they should eat vegetables so if you're like a healthy eating coach talking about like hey vegetables are really healthy for you and stuff like that um it, you know depending on your audience but they probably know that vegetables are healthy for them most likely and so you're not necessarily telling them they should eat healthy vegetables you're telling them hey i understand that eating healthy vegetables can be more expensive or be more time consuming but i'm going to show you how to make it easy okay so when you think of that um and this is a rut that a lot of us fall into because we want to make sure people know they they should do something um and you can put a little bit of that into your copy, but just don't, just don't let that be the thing that you beat them over the head with, okay? So does that make sense so far? And look, I'm so sorry, guys. The chat disappeared on me again. Come on, chat box, where'd you go? I don't know where it went, sorry. If you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself as we go, because I cannot get the darn chat box to come up. So when we break down copywriting, um, and this is, this is for ads, but this is also just great copywriting knowledge in general. So on your landing page, in your emails, all that kind of stuff. Um, there are basically four sins of ad copywriting. And one is being super generic. And so I want you to, to not write for the masses. I want you to find connection points with your audience. This is where it comes to knowing them really well is, is very important. Um, and so think about who, what, what type of person are you really calling in? So, you know, are they watching Grace and Frankie? Or are they a little bit more like Hallmark Channel? Because those are kind of like probably two different styles of people there. Um, and then you can pepper in little bits of connection um, throughout what you're writing. Um, and it's not going to be like crazy in your face. It might just be a little addition of a few words here and there. Um, and then also using tips that are like very well known throughout your industry you can do that but i'd rather you put a new twist on old content and i don't want you to be afraid to be divisive and this is something i want you to start thinking about in your head because you're gonna see in the ad copy templates as we scroll below where i'm asking you to put in a divisive statement um, often this is in the first line okay so if I wanted to be super divisive, I might say something in my first line like, organic reach is dead, get over it. Ads are the only way to grow your business. Now there's gonna be a lot of people out there that see that and they're like, oh no, 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 no. I grow my business with organic, you know, like, and that's fine because they're not my people, right? My people are the people that want ads. So I can be super divisive right there, all right? Um, if you're like a weight loss coach, you might be super divisive. You might put your stake in the ground and be like, Hey, listen, keto is a terrible thing. Let me tell you why, <laughs> you know, like you might go that way. I don't know for sure if that's your job, but that is something that you might have to do to really stop the scroll. And so it usually happens in the first line, but it can also happen elsewhere throughout your ad copy. Um, also being super stiff sounding like a marketing robot and this happens a lot when we first write our ad okay and so um we can put on our like marketing hat and then we get very teachery as we as we type and i'm always like you should do these four things to grow your email list and i'm like well that sounded dumb but okay sometimes you have to get the ugly out on paper to get to the good stuff so if it starts out stiff 
that's fine. Just go through and revise with some of the tips that I'm going to share with you below. So that way it in, incorporates more of that personality. Maybe it's just pulling in that divisive statement. Maybe it's pulling in a little piece of, of personality connection. All those things will help you from feeling too stiff. In the same vein, and this is really hard for a lot of people, you're, you don't have to worry about perfect grammar or complete sentences. Okay, so like, Think about how we text nowadays and just like emojis and things like that. And that actually works really well. Um, the caveat to this would be like, if your audience totally isn't into that. So like the client, the student I shared with you yesterday, her landing page, Jocelyn, and she's a book coach, that might not fly with her audience, right? If they see a bunch of grammatical errors, they might view that as like, not so credible. So obviously take that with like a little bit of a grain of salt, but for the most of us and most of our audiences, um, just having some relaxed, um, relaxed approach to it is really great. Um, and again, adding in the words that they're using is really, really important because we might sound, you can sound really stiff if you start using really technical terms like I did in that example about cost per click and you know, click through rate and things like that. So hack your audience and find out the words they use. And that can be really helpful in keeping it from sounding too stiff. Um, this last one is, or this third one is writing from fear. Okay. So I really, really want you to take this to heart is every time you put something out on the internet, whether it's an organic post or an email or an ad or a landing page, you are choosing to call in the exact type of person that you want to work with. So don't back down from that. Okay. I am fairly clear in all my marketing that I don't help brick and mortar and e-commerce. Not because I don't support those businesses, but because that's not where my expertise lies. And so they have a different set of needs that I really am capable of helping them with at this time. So, I don't want to have this generic, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a scarcity standpoint of like, I just want to make sure somebody buys my thing. So I'm just going to say like, hey, I, if you're in the online space at all, I can help you. And I'm like, that's not true, right? We all have that ideal person that we really, really want to work with. So your copy is a chance to call that person in. Um, for a while, I worked really specifically with moms. Um, and in, in helping them automate their organic social media back in, back in the day before I did a whole bunch of, um, ads is I really helped them or automate their organic social media. So I called in moms specifically now to be truthful, anybody mom or not could have benefited from the course I had. It was just great, great information about how to use online tools to automate your things. So any online business owner could have found really good value there, but I liked to inject my personality in there. And I was talking about things like, okay, well, if you have a toddler running underfoot, you don't always have time to post to Facebook, you know, and like moms get that. And it allowed me to be really specific and call them in and also give great examples and re relatability. And Caitlin, it kind of sounds like you're probably right about there because your person is so close to you already, just you one and a half years ago. Um, so just think about that and really call in those people. So Caitlin, for you, if I think I remember, if I remember right, I saw your ad and it said something about like um, um, being like in more recent motherhood. So if you're not, you know, like if your ideal person isn't a person that's sending their kid off to college, then that's okay. And you can put your stake in the ground on that and call in the people you really want to call it. Um, and then the last thing, and this is the thing that um, we get tripped up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, get tripped up on a lot, is selling features instead of benefits. So you guys, features are facts, okay? My academy is an eight-week program. That's a fact, right? Um, if you do your coaching thing with Caitlin, you get eight you know, you get four weekly calls or something like that. That's a fact. And facts are important. We definitely want to make sure people know what they're getting when they work with us, but they're not huge selling features the way we think they are. Benefits are actually the things that help people make buying decisions 
and facts are just like the way we justify it <laughs> in some ways. So if you have workbooks and, a, and you, you're advertising something and you're like, oh, I have this and I have this and I have that. Yeah, that's nice and it belongs on a sales page. It doesn't belong in your ad copy at all, at all. Um, instead, I really want you to think about the benefit people get from their experience with you and or the transformation they'll have from the opt-in that you're, you're offering. So, okay, if you have a PDF with a checklist, you might be like, well, what benefit? Well, if I go through this checklist, it gets me from A to B, right? And a lot of times benefits will focus on more emotional words. So you're going from overwhelmed to prepared. All right. You're going from not sure how to, to book your travel to having it done for you. Right. You are going from inconsistent. Like I can't get, I want to do yoga, but I can't get started to having a solution like online for you. So it really takes that arc of transformation and what that means for that person. So if they know that a daily practice of yoga would help them feel more calm and centered, um, then that's what we need to lean into. And so benefits tend to have these more emotionally weighted words, okay? They also tend to pick at the pain points a little bit more. Features almost never do that. Um, and so really focusing on benefits in your ad copy versus any features. Um, all right. So you're like, great, that sounds lovely. How do I write it? <laughs> well, here is my framework for writing your ad copy. First of all, your ad does have a headline. And so when you write your headline, I really want you to think about either say what it is, who it's for, and or share benefit statement. Okay, and I'm gonna show you some examples of this below. I have some examples. Um, then your opening line, well, that'll be, you guys, usually only the first two lines of your text show on an ad, and then somebody would have to click that see more button, um, especially on mobile. Um, sometimes on desktop, you might see a little bit more, depending on the placement, but especially on mobile, you really only get like that first line. So that's why that first line needs to be either a divisive statement where you're like putting your stake in this, putting their, you know, stake in the sand and saying like, this is where I stand on this. Or it might be a question that is, I call it an easy yes. If I was like, hey, you want to grow your email list on autopilot? Yeah, most people are like, why not? That's an easy yes. Like, I'd like to do that. That sounds great. Um, and some sort of dramatic line that could catch their attention. So if I'm like, I mean, and this is not, this is just an example. Growing your email list on autopilot can 10x your sales. Like that's a very dramatic statement, right? And people would be like, oh, dang, I kinda wanna know more. So think about something like that that is going to get people to read the next line. When you're doing an ad, you have to think about moving the reader down line by line by line. And I know that sounds really crazy, but you have to think we all have these little squirrel brains. Many of us have, children and other things happening in our lives that distract us from our phone. And so many of these ads are on our phone. Um, they definitely show up on desktop. That's definitely a thing. You can look at where your audience is, is consuming their ad the most. Almost nine times out of 10, it's on mobile. So you got to think how distracted you can get. Oh, I got a text message right as I was reading that. Ad. Oh, I got this, you know, and then shoo, shoo, you never come back. So each line is really just the designed to get you to read the next line, <laughs> keep, keep the curiosity going. So you have that opening statement where you're like, boom, in your face. And then I would love it if you could build some trust. And that can be either your credibility or authority. It's like, okay, I've had, you know, 10 plus years in the travel, you know, world or, or testimonial or social proof from one of your happy clients. Okay. Um, and if it can back up your initial hook, that's really great. So if, you're, if your social proof goes back to what you're saying, so if I said like, growing your email list can 10X your revenue, I would want someone, I would want to have, that, that's not a true statement, so just FYI, don't, don't believe that. I'm just using it as an example. Um, if I then had a client that was like, yeah, I used Katie's methods and I 10X my revenue in three months after I grew my email list, you know, or something like that, then it, it backs up 
what I said in the opening hook, okay? If it was a more generic statement, like, hey, Katie's really great to work with, like, that's nice, but, like, what, okay, great, like, what is the, what's the actual proof in that, you know? So you want to be selective with what you're including as your social proof. Then you want to go ahead and you want to start providing value. So pull out a pain point and then show how your offer is going to solve that. So if you have a PDF, this is now we're starting to talk about benefits and benefit statements and pain points. And these can kind of all be interchanged in the way that they're going. Well, I mean, the opening line is where it is, but um, these other things in the middle can kind of be moved around a little bit. You're going to see that in the examples I show you. Um, but then you can introduce your offer like, hey, this 10 step checklist will get you on your way to a um, deciding on your next luxury vacation spot or something like that, you know, or this quiz will help you decide your next luxury vacation spot, um, whatever that might be. So the pain point there, um, Robin, for you, if you had like a quiz about like how to find your perfect destination vacation or whatever, what could be like feeling cooped up since tr we haven't been able to travel lately, <laughs> which could be a pain point for people that love to travel. They might be like, dang, we haven't been able to go anywhere for months. You know, so then you say, okay, this quiz is going to show you where you should be dreaming of next. Um, then you want to list out your benefit statements. It's great to have like three or so. Three is kind of a good number. You might provide a few more. Um, but again, keep these as benefits, not features or facts. Um, how will they ex feel after they've, you know, completed this thing or um, if they read this um, take this quiz or if they, you know, read this, this PDF. Again, that's why you want to make sure you have an offer that actually helps people, right? Like, we don't want to be out there advertising something that, like, kind of is just something we slapped together and we weren't sure if people wanted it and we weren't sure if it would do anything for people. If it does something for people, you're going to be able to write about it. If it doesn't, then it might be like, ooh, okay, that's a little, that's a little sticky. What do we need to do about that, you know? Um, and then last is like a call to action. So you legitimately have to tell people, click here to get this PDF. <laughs> Download this PDF today. Register for this masterclass today. It might be like, oh, that seems like so tacky or whatever. Like really, if somebody read all the way to the bottom of my ad, do they really need to be told to be clicking here? They do. They really do. <laughs> so then you would also include your framework um, or your um, URL and you can put that in right into the ad copy itself. So on the ad, there's gonna be a little button that says like learn more, but you actually wanna put your URL right into the ad copy itself. That way if somebody's reading it and they get there, they can just click on it and be like, yeah, I, want to do, I do wanna do that. Um, and they don't even have to like look for the button. Again, we're making things as easy as possible on people, okay? So let's, I'm gonna stop right here and I'm just gonna look at um, the comments real quick and like, let's just pause and you tell me, do you have any questions? Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Okay, um, any questions so far about just the framework in general before we go in and see some, some ninja secrets and examples of it in action? All makes sense so far, awesome, okay, perfect. I'm gonna share my screen again, all right. So in, in the, we're getting right into the swipes. So headlines, don't let this part trip you up, but it does need to be eye catching, all right? So I'm giving you 10 headline swaps here and you can just tweak these as much as you need. But I wanna explain a couple of these things as you read them so that way they make sense. So like the simple steps, any ideal client title. Okay, ideal client title. What are your clients calling themselves? All right, so Caitlin, you might just say <laughs> 10 simple steps any overworked mom can use to achieve whatever that goal is that they wanna achieve. Again, use their words, right? So, and it could be, you know, three simple steps or if you can put a number in it, that's fine, have fun with it. Um, but think about how you can do some sort of ideal client like identifier. How will they identify with themselves? You know, um, if you say like new mom, like I would not identify with that because I am, my son is two and a half. So I don't feel like a new mom, right? If you say overworked mom, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> Cause 
<laughs> some days, <laughs> you know. So think about those things um, and, and how they would identify themselves. Um, I know we had someone in the bridal industry and I can't remember who it is exactly, but like, you know, any um, like 10 simple steps, any event planner needs to know or something like that. Wedding pro needs to know about to do this. So think about that. And, and that's what that means. And I'm just kind of explaining these because you're going to see these titles down below. Um, and then how to grow your email list, do the thing they want to learn, right? Again, saying in their words, how to grow your email list in just however many days, make it like an enticing time frame. or alternatively, instead of like an enticing time frame, you could say without a pain point. So for example, how to grow your email list in just 20 minutes a week. That's the enticing time frame. How to grow your email list without any tech headaches. That's the pain point. Do you see how I make those swaps? Does that make sense? Um, become a better, you know, wedding, become better wedding pro person, whatever that, I, don't, I can't think of the title for that. I used to work in the wedding industry and for the life of me, I know there's like a, a thing they call themselves and I just can't, can't seem to get it on the tip of my tongue today. Um, so you guys can see what this looks like all the way down, okay? So think about those things um, and how you can, use these swipes. And again, you're not going to copy these exactly. You guys, this is all for inspiration, but I know you all can have that creativity to, to look at this, this shell, this framework of a swipe and put it into place for your own business. Okay. I know you can do that. So don't be afraid to have a little fun with it. Um, below that is also your call to action swipes. And so that's, what's going to go down at the very bottom of your um, ad copy. So you might be like, save your seat then here's the URL, okay? Get instant access, download now. Um, talk to me if that's, if you're booking a call with someone, you might not do that in an email um, list building ad, but it kind of depends on your specific industry. Um, save now, so if you were doing like some sort of discount or coupon code or things like that, that'd be great. Um, grab, your, grab your seat right now. That's something you can do for a webinar or a masterclass for sure. Um, or just say like, grab my whatever it is template right now. <laughs> Here's the URL. Um, we just have to give people that last shove out the door to make them take action. Um, after that, uh, I do want to just talk through some special rules that Facebook has when we're writing ad copy. Um, and mostly this is where people get really confused because their ad might get rejected. So if you've ever run an ad before and it's been rejected, it's likely because something in the copy um, and they're not very good about telling you. They don't actually have a list of like things you can and cannot say, but us ads managers over the years have put together a fairly comprehensive list of like what they're looking for. In general, Facebook wants you to keep your ad copy focused on the positive. So we can pick up those pain points just a little bit but not too much, okay? We have to really tread lightly with the pain point picking. Um, you might be able to do more of that on your landing page um, and we can call it out just a little bit in the ad copy, but not too much. Facebook doesn't want people to feel bad, which is nice of them, but as a marketer, it is a fairly effective tactic to get people to pay attention. And so we need to just find that balance. Um, also, try not to do any curse words. Um, you can use fun emojis though as part of that. So I, I am a person that curses quite a bit. Um, and so when I write my ad copy every now and then I'll be a little edgier and I will put in the, um, you know, emoji <laughs> that might mean what it is, um, to get my message across. Um, Try to write your ad copy naturally first. So just write it how it naturally would come and then go back to edit. Do not try to edit as you write. You will drive yourself absolutely nuts. Definitely just try to get it out there and then do the editing as it comes. Um, swipe out as many you and yours as possible. I know that sounds weird, but um, you and your are kind of um, trigger words in Facebook ad copy land because when you put you and your in, you could potentially be making someone feel bad about themselves. So like you feel tired, you feel overweight, you feel overwhelmed, right? 
So when you have all those use in there, it starts putting up some, some red flags for Facebook. So you might write naturally like that, but then go back and edit them out and just say, could I just not include this you? Lots of times you don't even need it. It's amazing. But if you try to write that way, you'll drive yourself nuts. So to this day, I write how I would naturally write it. And then I go back and I edit out the use and I, and I, I do the emojis and I do all the stuff, right? Swipe your landing page. Um, the landing page we looked at the other day, I mentioned um, she had great copy on it. And so it's not like she needs to reinvent the wheel. She just needs to put it into these ad copy frameworks. So swiping your landing page copy is actually really great um, because it shows Facebook. Their, Facebook does actually look at your landing page where you are sending people to. Um, they scan it and they make sure it's in compliance with what they feel is okay. Because um, they don't want to do, like, they don't want people running clickbait ads. So if you say something in an ad and then you're sending people to someplace that's like completely different, um, they're going to deny your ad most likely um, because they don't, they want the user experience to be good. Um, so you can just swipe your ad copy from your landing page and that makes Facebook very happy. You can use emojis and that's great. Um, but you also want to um, avoid trigger words. So even if, Facebook doesn't read things in context because it's robots that do the initial scan. And if you, um, if you like get your ad rejected for whatever reason and you request a manual review, you might get a person reading it. Um, it's hard to know. Facebook's a little unclear on that. But um, they're not looking at things in terms of context. So if you were trying to be like tongue in cheek and you're just like, hey, making dinner every night, I have an easy solution for you. You're not making somebody feel bad about that, right? But you were saying like hate or um, does it just kill you when you can't figure out what to put on the menu each night or something like that? It's, it's going to see those words and it's going to be like, because eh, it's not reading everything in context. Okay, so just try to avoid those things. Um, avoid talking about um, weight loss promises and promises of financial income or medical claims or cures. Okay, usually that's not a huge issue. Um, but just kind of be aware of that. Um, so if your ad does get rejected, it's likely because it's one of those things. So just do some ideas around how you could say things differently. So if you were a weight loss coach, instead of saying like lose five pounds in five days, you might say fit back into your favorite jeans by the weekend. Okay. And that's actually really drawing people a picture, right? Cause there's a lot of us that say we want to lose five pounds, but really what we mean is we want to put back our favorite jeans and, and feel really awesome. Right. So it's actually just better ad copy in general. So think about those types of things if you are writing or if your ad gets denied. All right. So here are the templates. Um, let me just, Hey Katie, can I ask yeah. a question? Yes. you So can. that's for the ads, but let's, let's say, Let's say you have more of those pain point, you know, you, you, you get to more of those pain points on your landing page. Like Facebook is not looking at that and saying, no, we don't like this on the landing page. So we're going to die. They just don't want it in their ads copy. Um, there was a little, it's a little gray area on that. They, I would not overstep your bounds on your landing page. Let's put it that way. So you might be able, so like one thing Facebook really hates is before and afters. Um, so like if you're a weight loss coach, you, you really can't show those even on your landing page. A lot of times it will get you denied. Okay. Um, but Facebook doesn't always like say why, and they don't always, they're not always in incredibly clear on if they have reviewed your landing page or not, but they might say something like, we believe your user experience is not, you know, conducive to our platform or something like that. And it's really like, what the heck is that supposed to mean? Um, so I would, you can, you have a little bit more free reign on your landing page, but I would still just keep these general things in mind. Like, okay. yeah, especially, um, ish in the medical field, like, you know, with like mindfulness and things like that, you, you just, you wouldn't want to make any cures of like, or claims of like, you know, regain your sanity, beat depression, all through mindfulness. Like that would probably be some triggering things on there, um, mm -hmm. even on your landing page. Now, I know you would never say that, but just as an example. 
Okay. So, so then the landing page needs to be done uh, when you are creating your Facebook ad. Okay. Yes. That's it. So, Did not realize that. <laughs> great question. Great okay. question. You guys, your ad <clears throat> is really the last thing you create because here's the deal. You have to have, you have to know what the heck you're advertising, right? So you have to have a way for people to sign up. It's great if you can prove it a little bit organically first. So you need to have a landing page. You need to have a thank you page. You need to have all those pieces in place before you can run an ad because you're putting that URL in the ad. You're putting the URL for the thank you page in your custom conversion. You have to have your pixel installed on all those things. Your ad is actually the very last piece of the puzzle. And so if you have your opt-in created and your landing page created and your thank you page created, then you're like, great, I'm going to write my ad. I'm going to swipe some copy from my landing page. I'm going to steal some of these frameworks. Um, and then I'm going to put it into ads manager. I'm going to budget it appropriately and I'm going to hit go. <laughs> but if you try to do all that stuff, you're going to be bouncing back and forth because you're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to run this ad. And then you're like, oh, wait, I need a place to send them. Let me go build a landing page and get a URL. Okay, great. But, oh, now I have to go backwards in my ad process because I didn't have the thank you page. So I need to go get the custom conversion. So I need a thank you page. You are, it's a mess, right? Like nobody wants to do that. So it's all about getting all those pieces in place first, your auto respond or all that kind of stuff. Because the second you turn that ad on, you want that user experience to be really good, right? So you want someone to sign up and get their email auto responder and then get their email, you know, welcome sequence and all that kind of stuff. Um, it makes total sense. I just, it just doesn't dawn on you until you actually hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and quite frankly, writing the ad seems like much more doable than creating a landing page sometimes. Cause I think we think creating landing pages can be really scary, but if you're doing it in convert kit or lead pages or something like that, it, it, it is something that can honestly take you like 20 minutes. Um, and just like creating your ad, once you know the technical places of all these things, um, you can create your ad and still drink a hot cup of coffee. Like it's not something that should take so much time. Obviously when you're learning and you're unfamiliar with the platform, you're going to get your feet wet a little bit and it's going to take you a little longer. Um, but once you kind of get your system down and you're like, okay, I have all my pieces in place. Um, it, it really can come together very quickly. And or if you have a VA or someone you hire to help you with that, then it comes together really, really fast. <laughs> um, perfect, perfect question, Ish. Thank you. All right, guys. So here's some of these templates, and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, scroll down to template number two because I have an, a copy um, an example here, but I just want to see so you can see exactly how you can use these because these are all gonna resonate with you differently. So I'm not going to go through each one of them point by point, but I want to pull out like what is the, what we're getting at here and then show you a couple of examples of, of it in real life. So your headline would be like, skip the pain point, right? So what is that pain point? Um, and reach desired goals with ease. So for me, um, I said like, skip the hustle, scale with ease, or I could have said, skip the hustle, grow your email list with ease. Those are kind of interchangeable there. So then you would say, ask a question they wouldn't say yes to. And I love, I put some emojis in just to show you guys, you can use them all throughout. And then provide a piece of social proof. A testimonial would be great. Then it's, okay, well, that's why I created this, you know, whatever, this grow your email list masterclass that anyone can use to grow their email list in, you know, 20 minutes each week without a tech headache, or wasting time on social, hustling on social, or, you know, whatever. You know, I can put all those emotionally derived pain points in. And then I want to back that up with a little bit more social proof. I use this framework to help my clients do X, Y, Z. So then you're just reinserting your authority and your credibility. And I'm going to show you this exact framework in this free PDF, or this free masterclass, or this free five-day challenge, whatever it is. And this is what you're gonna get out of it, right? So these are those benefit statements. So knowing these is super important, right? And then you say, I wanna help you achieve this goal. Click here to register or click here to download. You know, opt, swap out those, those words as you need to as appropriate to your opt-in. 
um, and then you put the URL in. So you see how that takes them through that piece by piece. It's just putting someone from the first, first line all the way to the last line and then hopefully saying, yes, I want that. Yes, I want that. Yes, I identify with that. Every piece of it. So this is what this ad looks like in real life. I'm going to show you because it's one I just ran. So maybe some of you saw it. But here's my say yes. Um, my whoop, say yes. Want to learn how to 3x your email list in under 20 minutes each week? That's an automatic yes. Um, as a Facebook ads manager who's managed 100 plus campaigns, that's the social proof. That's me showing my authority. Um, and then also like a fun little emoji. I'm gonna say that's why I've created this easy to use framework that anyone can use to effortlessly grow their email list without spending time each, hours each week hustling. So again, going into that pain point, and then I say, I've used this framework to help clients grow their email list by 40, 70, even 120% in a matter of weeks. It gets social proof, social proof, social proof. And I say, when you leave this training, you can finally do this, this, this. I wanna help you grow your coaching courses, high ticket offers to the next level. And I wanna save you time while doing it. So that's like me pulling out that pain point, but I'm, I'm flipping it. So I've, instead of saying like, don't waste hours, which is like picking out that pain point, I'm saving you time. So it's like the, it's like the flip version of that pain point. And then I just used the, the um, emojis again, skip the hustle scale with ads, um, click here to register. Boom, email, the URL's in there. And you can see even that the, you know what? I don't have my screen shared, do I? Do I have it shared? Can you guys see this? Because I just saw a bunch of things in the chat. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, sorry, I see a bunch of chats and now I'm, I'm I got con con concerned. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, so then you can see I have the um, headline right here, skip the pain point, right? We all talk about the hustle as a, as a um, online business owner, scale with ads. And so that is what that looks like in action. And it's gonna look a little different for each one of you, um, but you can see how I was able to just pull in pain point benefit statement, pain point benefit statement, and kind of repeat it throughout and then have lots of social proof in this one. Um, let me see. I want to make sure. What does it mean to swipe your landing page? Okay. Um, sorry, Christine. So to swipe your landing page, it means to steal the copy that's on your landing page. You don't have to re re reinvent the wheel. Whatever you wrote on your landing page can be used directly on your um, ad. So for example, these like little bullet points, like fill your email list with high quality leads, say bye-bye to unengaged freebie grabbers. That was on my actual masterclass registration page. So I just used the same copy. I didn't try to rewrite it. I didn't try to find a more clever way to say something. I wrote it once really well, and then I put it into my ad. So that's what it means. And how do you not use you when you talk about the user's pain points? Um, so I have you in here a couple of times. You guys can see that, right? That's fine. I went through and I will pull out more um, You'll see it better in the next example, and I'll show you, okay? This one, this one, I didn't have as many pain points on here. So in the next example I show you, you'll, you'll see a better example of that. So let me kind of click down here, one second. So this one, it's, um, it's a little bit more of a kick in the pants one, okay? So you can see achieving the desired goal, time frames. Then we are also talking about some undesirable results, okay? So this one's gonna pick up pain points a little bit more, and I'm gonna show you um, what that looks like. So let me open that up for you. So sick of wasting your marketing budget and time attracting these kinds of leads? That's a pain point. And I could probably just take your out of here. Sick of wasting marketing budget and time attracting these kinds of leads? You could. You could maybe skip it there. Again, we're not being grammar police in these ads, um, but these are the undesirable results. Like I don't, my people don't want freebie seekers. You wanna fill your 
email list with people that actually want to be there, right? Tire kickers, um, know it all already, that kind of thing. So those are undesirable results. Um, and then I say, are you ready to attract an email list of the, you know, these are the desirable. So I take what they didn't want and I back it up immediately by showing them like, I'm going to be able to show you how to do these things. Um, and then again, kind of goes down listing out, um, the benefits they're going to get here. Again, this is exactly what was on my website, on my registration page, um, with that one. And so that is just a way to, and then at the end, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to show you how you can go from spending hours each week. And instead of saying you can go here, I could have said, I'm going to show you how to go from spending hours each week, hustling the algorithm to having to actually probably would have been a better rewrite. Now that I see it myself, I probably should have taken out that you and just say how to go. But this is why I say you have to write things as they naturally come out. Because if I were trying to write that without having use in there, it would just drive me nuts. Um, and then this is just a very simple proven type of headline, how to achieve this thing, how to grow your email list with Facebook and Instagram ads. Right. So it's just very, very clear. Um, my favorite uh, copywriting coach, her name is Marisa Corcoran. She's amazing. She always says it's better to be clear over clever. And that is very, very true in ads. Because if people don't know what you're saying, they're not going to stop to try to figure it out. So don't try to be all tongue in cheek and like, especially in headlines, just be super clear. This is what it is. <laughs> um, Can I ask another question, Katie? Yeah, go for it. Hi. Um, I like I said, overthink things. So I'm going to ask a question. Go for it. Um, I, first of all, I want to say I appreciate and like, and maybe I'm sure that this is not just Facebook, but how you're talking about, you know, as opposed to saying something negatively, flipping it and stating it positively. Mm -hmm. I've seen that more and more from female copywriters lately. Um, whereas I've in the past been, you know, coached or like gone to webinars from men who are, very much like stick on the pain points, make it negative and put you in there as much as possible so that you can like speak to, you know, your one person, right? Yeah. So by, so the more you can put you in there, like I've actually been coached to read over the copy and replace me with you as many times as possible. So Is that specifically I'm just, for ads or were they talking about like copy in general? Copy in general. Yeah. So not just ads. So that's part of my question. Like that, that was a little bit more of like posting on Instagram, you know, as opposed to ads. So I'm curious, like if that is something that you suggest that you see, um, and if yeah. taking up whether, that you, it, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So whether or not the bro marketers have l led you astray this whole time or not, is that our question? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I find the, the female copywriters refreshing because yeah. there's, there's been something the whole time in these male copywriters that I, or, you know, male coaches, whatever that I've been seeing for a while, it's always felt a little like sticky for me, to be honest. Like it's, yeah. it's felt a little weird. So this on the other hand feels a little bit more, you know, natural. <laughs> Bye, Valerie. Bye Valerie. We'll, we'll put the replay up here soon. Um, yes. So number one, like always keep your audience in mind. If they're an audience that can bear a little bit more picking, then maybe you can pick a little bit more. Um, and when you're doing organic copywriting, so with the ads, you definitely want to pull out the use as much as possible, um, just because it can get you flagged. So um, there's that. But like, even as a, like I've seen video coaches say, that I'm no video expert by any means, but they're like, you want to say you in the first 10 minutes or 10 seconds of your video. And you want to say you twice in the first, like, or say you in the first five seconds. And if you can say you twice in the first 10 seconds, you've got people hooked. So there's not, it's not that saying you, it does get people's attention and it can call out. Um, and it can do that. But I just think there's a time and a place for it. And there's a large scale of ways to write. Um, 
whether it's organic or email or ads or whatever. And I just think trying to stick to any one formula all 100% of the time, A, is boring, and B, is ineffective. Because how will you ever know if people respond better to something else? You know? So it's nice to sometimes take what the experts are saying and then do a little tweaking to what feels right. And if you're like, hey, this has always felt a little sticky, you know, it's good to explore that. And sometimes we do need to push ourselves to be a little uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable, you guys, for me to put in there that my client had, a, in that last example, had 120% um, growth in her email list. And I just, because it sounds unrealistic, right? And I don't want to be one of those marketers where people are like, yeah, they just say these like ridiculous numbers. Um, so that was sticky to me. But the truth is, it's a fact. And she's not my only client that's had that kind of success. So it's like, okay, if it's sticky just because of your personal feelings on it, like, can you back it up with data? And that feels good, right? And then you're just like, okay, I'm just going to get uncomfortable here. And that's all right. And I'm going to move past that like mental block. But if it's sticky because you're like, hey, I'm helping new moms and they kind of already feel bad about themselves and I really don't want to make them feel worse. That's a different conversation, right? You know what I mean? Um, and there are different audiences that need a different approach. And so while I definitely think you can 100% use you in all of your organic marketing, like go for it. I also think there's a lot of, um, a lot of success and a lot of great learnings that come from sharing I stories. I struggled with this. I did this. This is how I experienced. This is how I felt. And there are ads that are written like that. There are I story ads. Um, Jen did a great I story ad. Um, you'll have to ask her about it, but uh, hers was about her stroller meltdown. I was melting down in the middle of an old Navy parking lot. I remember that one. Yeah. It's a good I statement because other moms could identify with it, right? Yep. So yeah. if your I statement is just a story about you, I don't know. You got to ask, like, how does it connect? And not only how does it connect, but how does it move people to take action? Because a story where people identify themselves, that's fine in brand awareness and things like that. But when you want someone to take action, just connecting isn't enough. So if Jen had just left her story like, oh, I, I melted down in the middle of an old Navy, I couldn't open the thing, and I went home and I was upset. You know, it was what happened afterwards and what steps did I take and then how can you do the same thing? You know, and so it's showing that transformation point in your eye story too that's really important. And that can be done in an ad, 100%, um, but it can be done in video, in email, in organic, all the things, right? So use are not bad <laughs> in general. Um, key takeaway, use are not bad in general, but definitely decrease them in your ad because I just don't want you to get declined. Um, but uh, the stickiness, just ask yourself why it's sticky. And I think you're probably going to know. And if I just had to guess, it's because you don't want your audience to feel bad when they are maybe already on the struggle bus about something. And that's great. So it's like, how can you maybe identify that pain point and then very quickly move past it, right? It's not the thing that you need to pick out a whole lot, maybe, because they're like, yeah, I get it. Totally there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me keep reading. Go on. <laughs> you know, they're okay. like, I'm yep. good. Yeah. So, does that make okay. sense? Yeah, that's really helpful. And it's helpful for me to think about separating because I, I haven't before, you know, I'm getting ready to do ads. That's my daughter, sorry. <laughs> getting ready to do ads. So all of this is new, but understanding that the, the writing, she's a dinosaur and that's all the um, Okay. <laughs> understanding that there is and can and should be a difference between, you know, an organic reach post kind of thing versus um, some ad copy. So Thank you very much. Sorry, I hope I didn't take up too much time. Thanks. You're fine, Caitlin. You're fine. <laughs> All right. Um, this last one here, I'm going to show you on example seven. Um, this is one of my students in the last round of the Profitable Ads Academy, Brenda. I love this ad of hers because she took the framework and she completely made it her own. Um, she helps women over 40 with healthy lifestyle swaps. Okay. So what is interesting is that Brenda had, before she came to the academy, she had tried to run ads on her own. And she was like, not seeing a whole lot of success. And so when we got on her strategy call, she was, we looked at her landing page. It was converting at 2%. That's not great, okay? 
so we made some changes on the copy of her landing page, um, did some things like that, and then we carried those same changes over into her ad copy. So one of the things that she was kind of making a mistake on on her landing page is that she was not calling out women over 40. <laughs> she said nothing about age in there. And I'm like, but Brenda, do you really want to work with women over 40? And she's like, yeah, that's where I'm called to work because right around 40, your energy levels start to dip and I want to show women like you don't have to just be fatigued all the time. And I'm like, okay, so we definitely need to call that out on your landing page. So we got her landing page fixed. It went from converting at 2% to converting at 40%, which is right where we want it. So that's great. But then we did our swipes of the landing page um, and put that into her ad. So you'll see there, right in her, right in, in the very headline, healthy eating made simple after 40. Like, this is what it is and who it's for right in your face. And it's not any more complicated than that. Okay. Um, and then she starts out with an immediate yes question. Want a really good excuse to binge watch your favorite Netflix series? <laughs> yes, of course. I want to do that. Like that's an immediate yes. And then she just does a little bit of, um, like meal prepping. Like this is my solution. Okay. Well, why would we do that? Now she's in the, in the world where in the health and healthy eating world, like there are a lot of people that maybe have heard about meal prepping. Um, and so she has some different objectives to overcome, but this is where, um, she is taking things that were maybe a pain point and turning them into a benefit statement. So thicker wallet. And so instead of saying like, um, you know, healthy eating is expensive. That's like a, a pain point or a commonly held belief that people have about healthy eating. She's like, actually, if you're not eating out, you're saving money. Um, less stress. You can see she used all the emojis, right? We didn't even use, I don't even use that many of mine, but she did all the emojis, which is amazing. Um, and she is turning some phrases on their head. So it's meal prepping done right is not about eating the same meals every day which is a commonly held belief like if i think about meal prepping i'm like oh yeah you make like eight bowls of rice and you put chicken in it and that's what you eat for lunch all week like that's kind of where we go right so she is like flipping the switch on it of this commonly held belief um and then she is saying um i'm the person to help you do this right and so i created this is an i statement i created a complete meal plan um, so this is like a PDF that she had, um, and then, you know, go swipe my meal plan guide and be a meal prep master in no time by Kristen. I will email you Kristen, um, for your address. And then, um, they put the URL in there. So you can see this is, this is not, I know that you guys might not have a big understanding of, um, conversion rates and things like that, but with Brenda's ads, she is getting two times the normal click-through rate of a normal ad. So a normal click-through rate is about 1%. Um, and she is consistently like 1.9 to 2.5% in her ads. So it, and they convert at like 40 to 60% on traffic for her. Um, so these are, this is, this is something that she is running in real time right now and it's doing exceptionally well. Um, to grow her email list. And I want to say, I, I, I'll have to look and see how much her email list has grown over the summer. Um, or actually just since July when she started running this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you can see how she took the different elements and made it her own. And she put some things in there about like watching Netflix. Like that's something her audience has told her they like to do. Her audience, they are moms. Most of them are moms, but they are mostly moms with older kids. So she doesn't need to put in things, things like, you know, by like watching, she doesn't need to say watching Paw Patrol. Like that's something I say a lot in mine. You can do this in the time it takes you to watch Paw Patrol episodes. I'm a toddler mom. Paw Patrol is my life right now. So that's me inserting just a little of my personality. And this was her inserting a little bit of her personality, but also connecting with her audience because she knows they, they like to binge watch Netflix because they talk about it in her Facebook group a lot. So this is something... Um, just as an example to see how it all works together. Um, so you guys, these are the swipes you can have. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. You now have this workbook, you can save it, you can you do with it what you need, make comments in it, make adjustments to the swipes, all that kind of stuff. They are meant for inspiration um, to show you how 
really what you need to identify are your pain points and your benefit statements, and then speak into those things with personality. Um, so I hope this was really, I hope this really showcased how ad copy writing really comes through and how it just is a kind of a reflection of your entire brand. But also I hope these templates really made it a lot easier for you <laughs> to do that. Um, so that way you had like a jumping off point. And if you want to move around the benefit statements and the pain points, it's yours. Have creative fun out with it. Um, that's what you can do. So um, before we kind of dive into, you know, other q and I know we've been asking some questions along the way, which is amazing. I love it. Um, I do just want to let you know that there is another um, thread in the Facebook group today. So I just want, um, I can't even remember what it was, but it's in there. And it's going to um, basically ask you a little bit about what you kind of took away from this ad copywriting lesson today. But today, I feel like nothing says creativity like burning a candle. I personally burn candles when I sit down to write ad copy because it just feels like a writery thing to do. And it just gets me in this fun mindset. So this candle, it is made from Dirt Road Candle Co., which is local here in Iowa. And you guys, the candle scent, it's called Shiplap. It's not too floral. It's not too citrusy. It's, it's amazing. And so I am going to send this to somebody. Again, just drop your comment in the thread, and then I will randomly select. It's a very scientific process where I write everybody's name that did it down on a post-it note, and then I crumple them up in a hat, and I pull one out. So very scientific. Um, but then tomorrow, more, tomorrow afternoon, I will draw the winner for this candle, and that will go out. So be sure to drop that into the thread for me today. Um, but let's open it up for some more Q&A um, and or if you had had run any ads before, if you wrote your copy this way, you know, or if maybe you tried writing copy a little bit differently and you want to ask me some questions about it, my brain is yours. So feel free to either unmute yourself or drop it into the chat. Oh, Kristen, how do Instagram ads differ? I assume shorter. Not necessarily. And so here's the thing, a lot of those examples, you guys are gonna be long form um, ads. And so you, you should always test um, and people will tell you, oh, test long form versus short form. There's a reason that all seven of those swipes are more longer form ads. And it's because I have tested long form versus short form and I do it for every client because you always test and every time it's been long form. <laughs> so I'm giving you the swipes that kind of are probably gonna lead you in the best direction but you should test shorter copy. But on Instagram, it will actually show. Um, it does cap out at a certain, like very, very insanely long word count. I can't even remember, but um, none of those frameworks will get you capped out on, on Instagram. So um, you should be fine there. Um, when you do ads on Instagram or Facebook, do you use hashtags? No, you don't need to. No, because you're actually, Hashtags are there for reach. You can use hashtags if it's like fun and like tongue in cheek. Um, but uh, I would just say hashtags are there to get you more reach and you're already paying for reach by running an ad. So you don't necessarily need to include the hashtags on them. And in fact, it might look a little funky if you did. So um, I'm not sure exactly how it would show up. Sometimes it could look a little weird. Um, so you don't need to, but that's a great question. Um, one thing that we didn't necessarily talk about, and I will pop it into the group next week, but I will just, um, I will just mention it now and I'll make a note to myself. So that way I can give you guys some examples next week. I'm going to make a note right now. If you've ever thought about running Instagram stories ads and you're like, where does all the coffee go? Because it's an Instagram story. <laughs> just know all you need is basically a headline because that's all that you can fit onto an Instagram story ad. <laughs> you just need a really amazing headline um, and that entices people to take action and learn more because there's really not a lot of space for copywriting on the Instagram story yet. But I will show, share with you guys next week a couple of examples of that. Um, I call Instagram stories ads my, my lazy copywriting ad when I feel like I don't know what else to say. I'll do an Instagram stories ad because uh, it's just a headline basically. All right. Um, will you talk tomorrow about Facebook ads manager to custom target our intended audience? Actually, we are going to touch on that tomorrow, Christine. Oh, yeah, perfect. Perfect question. 
Um, yes, Instagram story ads seem easy and always give me a swipe. Yeah, Kristen, that's amazing. So if you've been running ads and you're feeling like you, the story ads are working well for you, that's awesome. They are, have been, I've had really mixed bag reviews. I have some clients, in fact, Brenda, the example I just showed you guys, she turned that into an Instagram story ad um, and she had amazing results. And then um, I've had clients that we've tried Instagram stories and they're, they just weren't getting any clicks. So a lot of it really depends where your audience is likely to hang out and, and take action. Oh, you mean, I mean, personally, I get influenced to swipe up. Well, see, there you know. Now you know, Kristen, it works. But like I said, it is a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Um, I will tell you guys, honestly, I ran ads to fill up my master class. Um, and the Instagram stories ads, they didn't have a highest conversion rate, but they were the lowest cost for me. So it's always worth testing. Um, do you typically use the same ad copy for Facebook and Instagram? Yes. So um, you can separate out your ad campaign into this one gets shown on Facebook and this one gets shown on Instagram. Um, but in general, what I really encourage most people to do is just use automatic placement, which is the placement setting inside Facebook Ads Manager. That's just gonna put it everywhere that that ad can go um, because you never know where your audience is gonna result, like have its best results. And so by doing automatic placements, you're able to show up the exact same ad on Facebook and on Instagram. And then you can look at the metrics later and decide, okay, well, where were people taking action? Were they taking action from Instagram or were they mostly on Facebook? And once you've done that a handful of times, and if you have some consistent results, you might know like, hey, my people are just more on Facebook. Or you might be like, nope, my people are more on Instagram. But it takes a minimum, an amount of testing to know that. So off the bat, I always like to do automatic placement. Um, Robin, are there any expensive, inexpensive landing page host choices? Yeah, so I like um, lead pages. It's pretty, I, I want to say it's like, gosh, I haven't, I haven't had it personally for a while, so I'm sure their costs might maybe have changed, but it was around $40 a month. Um, you and, cut out. You're, I couldn't oh, hear what, you, that, what your answer was. You kind of cut out for a minute there. Uh, lead pages? Oh, lead okay. pages. Thanks. I Thanks. think it's around $40 a month ish um which you have to i mean every business expense adds up you know so you know take into consideration your budget um but like click funnels is closer to 99 dollars a month i'm fairly certain and insta page i think is closer to that as well um so lead pages has been um the more cost effective Plus there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to set things up and people have had a little bit better customer service with them. Um, I don't personally use them anymore, but I, when I did, it was very easy. So that's what I would, that's where I would lean towards. Does lead pages replace um, ConvertKit? It's different. It's different. So you can okay. make a landing page and a thank you page on ConvertKit. Um, and I think you saw my video about like the squirreliness of the pixel on that. Um, lead pages would is for sure like you can put your pixel exactly where it needs to be there's no question in my mind that is great but it's not an email autoresponder so you definitely you would connect your lead pages account to your convert kit account so when somebody signs up on lead pages it gets added to your convert kit account and then it kicks off the autoresponder welcome sequence yeah oh boy don't let the tech scare you guys because you yeah. know what here's the thing there are people you can hire to set it up it's not overly difficult and once you've set it up once most of the things inside of those platforms can just be duplicated so like you have a good landing page you've set it up maybe you hired someone to set up but then you want to do a different maybe a different pdf all you have to do is duplicate it and change a little bit of the wording. So I'm a big fan of anything that can just be duplicated <laughs> in my life. I'm just like, great, duplicate and change the text and here we go. So um, don't let that be the thing that holds you up because it, it's very real. It's very, you know, you do have to figure it out. But um, usually it's kind of a, once it's set, you don't have to go in and fiddle with it too much. 
But it does seem to get complicated dealing with all these different service providers. Then I have to remember the password for each of them. And then it also gets costly, as you said. I mean, like yeah. it, it does add up once you once you add all these things. So unless you're really offering high priced items, um, it's it's it definitely adds a lot to the cost structure. It does. And so as you guys are kind of setting up some stuff, there's there are some different like all in one things that are done like done for you. So like um, Kajabi, for example, Kajabi will send out emails. Kajabi will have your landing pages. If you have a course or a membership site, it can be housed on Kajabi. Kajabi is like one hundred and fifty dollars a month. <laughs> so if if that makes sense, you can have your website there. So if one hundred and fifty dollars a month is a better use of your money to have it all in one place, go for it. Um, but it also like takes into account like what level of tech can you do? I'm pretty tech. So I build all my stuff on Squarespace because I can and because I have a graphic designer that helps me with the little pieces that I can't do. Um, but not everybody has that. So that's why I like lead, lead pages because it's not super techy. You, it is really a drag and drop. I click here and I can type. Um, I find Kajabi just a little bit harder to intuitively understand. Um, but that being said, if you're not a tech person, then Upwork is your new best friend and you can hire someone to do stuff on Upwork for about $50 <laughs> and it can get done really quickly and really, um, really, really well, as long as you know exactly what it is you, you need someone to do. You know, if you're still trying to figure it out and you, you have to, you go to Upwork once you're like, this is my landing page. I've written all the stuff. I've done all the work, like da, 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 da. I hand over the Word document, they make it happen, they do all the connections, right? So, you know, but to me, that's worth $50 to, to just not have to do that. Um, but when you outsource, you out yeah, sorry, Katie, when you outsource that work to somebody like Upwork or something, does that mean you also have to supply them with your login and password for all these different services to set yeah, it up? That's why a lot of people use LastPass because um, LastPass allows you to keep your password private, but give people the access they need. Last so I'll look into that. LastPass, yep. Any other questions? All right. All right, guys, well, thank you so much. So glad you joined. Um, again, tomorrow we're actually gonna be talking about once all these people are on your email list, what the heck do you do with them? And why does ads play a role once people are on your email list? Because if you're thinking that ads stop once they get on their email list, I, I have a few um, ninja secrets for you tomorrow. Um, so definitely join in tomorrow, again, 2 p.m. Central, I keep saying Central Standard Time, but then somebody's like, it's actually daylight time right now because of daylight savings time. I'm like, I will never get it right. By the time I get it right, the time will change again and then I'll be doing it wrong all again. But we'll say 2 p.m. Central, okay? 2 p.m. Central, again, same time, same Zoom link. I will put this recording for anybody that's um, catching this or had to step out into the email tomorrow so you have that. Um, but in the meantime, make sure to jump over to the Facebook group um, and share your takeaways in that thread so that way you can be entered to win what I'm calling my creativity candle because I love it and it makes me feel like I have my writing hat on. Um, other than that, guys, have a great rest of your day. If any other questions pop up for you, um, please do share them in the group and I will uh, be sure to get you answers right away. Okay? Bye, guys.